ordinary horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail, Silver. Hooray! When Bill's at bat, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets the hit because he knows he's got... Cheerios, Cheerios. Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen... Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. While working on an old mansion in the east, a man named Digger found a document that had been buried for over 50 years. It was a complete set of plans prepared by Aaron Burr for seizing control of the southwest. These plans would work today as well as 50 years ago. They'd be worth a fortune to someone. Ace Martin lives in the southwest. He knows a lot of rich men there. I could team up with Ace. That's an idea. Team up with Ace. So Digger wrote a letter to his friend in the Southwest. Ace Martin, one of the shrewdest confidence men in the Southwest, read Digger's letter several times and considered the amazing possibilities it suggested. The next day, he rode to the biggest ranch in the territory and showed the letter to the owner, a hard-faced man named Halstead. In his ranch house, Halstead read the letter, then eyed Ace Martin. He said... Is uh, this man Digger a friend of yours? Oh, I knew him very well before I left Ohio. Do you think he's telling the truth about finding the original Aaron Burr papers? I'm sure he is. Why do you think uh, I'd be interested in them? Because, Mr. Halstead, I'm familiar with your operations. You control several banks and a railroad. You've used the power of these to break a dozen cattlemen. So you could get their ranches for practically nothing. <clears throat> You've acquired more property than any man in this territory. You're always alert for the chance to grab more. You're known as a cattle baron. And you like the title. Get to the point of your visit. Aaron Burr worked out a plan to seize this entire territory and establish a kingdom of his own. I'd uh, have to see the plans to judge their value. Digger will bring them to me when I send word. I wouldn't care to undertake such an enterprise with men like you and Digger aware of what I was doing. You might be able to make trouble. Then let us in the deal with you. I could use you, but uh, Digger would have to be eliminated. I understand. I'd like to see the plans of Aaron Burr if, when you bring them to me, you can assure me that you and I are the only living men who know of their existence. Something might happen to Digger on his way from the east. <laughs> You have imagination. I'll write to Digger and tell him to be sure to let me know what stagecoach you'll take. Ace Martin sent an urgent letter to Digger and in due time received a reply that specified the stage on which the man from Ohio would arrive in the town of Red Rock. Martin made plans accordingly. <laughs> Oh, 
On the day when Digger was due to reach his destination, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding eastward along the road. They heard the distant clatter of a stagecoach and drew rain. Oh, oh, oh. oh fella. Stagecoach coming this way, Kimasabi. That's the one scheduled to reach Red Rock at noon. Oh, driver, see mask. Maybe think we outlaws. Maybe start gunplay. They ride into the woods beside the trail and stay out of sight until they... Gunshot. That means trouble. Motel there. Get scout. Dashing ahead, the Lone Ranger and Tonto soon rounded the bend and saw three mounted men holding guns on the driver of the halted stage. The men's faces were concealed by bandanas and the driver's hands were high. Get hold up. To divert the attention of the gunman, the Lone Ranger fired a warning shot. The others were taken by surprise. They returned the gunfire wildly as they fled into the nearby woods. And run away. Let them go for now. We'll stop at the stage and see if anyone's hurt or anything stolen. Don't shoot. My hands are up. We'll not shoot, driver, unless you reach for a gun. We're on the side of the law. Yes, he's just said to be killed. Tonto, there's a man slumped on the seat inside the coach. Uh-huh. Those crooks must have hit him. They fired a lot of shots. Step to the ground, driver. Watch him, Tonto, and take his gun. I'll examine the passenger. Uh, you hear what Kimasabi tell you? Well, I was getting down, but you don't see why I should hand over my gun. You two are on the side of the law. I'm not sure you're on the side of the law. Me? Let me take gun. Come here to the door of the stage. Dad, rather, if you think I was in cahoots with those gunslinging cold cats, I... Gosh, they got the passenger. Is, is he dead? Yes, two bullets struck him, and three more came close. Here's where they hit the stagecoach. Yeah, those murders. Were any shots fired at you? Not that I know of. I didn't think so. The fire seems to have been concentrated on this man. Gunslingers opened fire as soon as they rode out of the woods. I drew rein fast and heisted my hands. Did you recognize the men? No, their faces were covered. How about their voices? Only one of them opened his mouth. He said to hurry and get the sealed envelope. Before anyone could dismount, you two came around the bend and they skedaddled. Do you know what they meant by a sealed envelope? No. Are you carrying anything of value? Not a thing. I can't figure why anyone would attack this outfit. Obviously, to murder this man and get a sealed envelope. Well, maybe it's in his pocket. Now, mister, you shouldn't go through that man's pocket. The sheriff wouldn't like it. You know this man's name? Well, he called himself Jim Digger. Here's a sealed envelope, a thick one. This must be the one those gunmen were after. Here's a letter. Addressed to Jim Digger in Ohio. He said he came from Ohio. He was going to Red Rock. Hey, now you're tearing open the sealed envelope. The sheriff's going to be awful mad. Sorry, but I want to see if... Uh, oh, uh, Cotto, return the driver's gun. Um, here, John. Put it in hold. Yeah, thanks. Mister, whatever those papers are, they seem to have charged you. Now, what in tarnation? Driver, you're already behind schedule. You better get going. The sheriff in Red Rock will take charge of the body. Tell him what happened. I ought to give the sheriff those things you took from Digger's pocket. Uh, give him this. Cartridge? Yes, it's made of silver. Tell him the masked man who sent it intends to search for the murderers. Well, I'll tell him. But I warn you, mister, he'd be mighty sore when he hears that you kept the papers that were in the sealed envelope. And that letter, he'll think you're concealing evidence. He'd be surprised at what I'm concealing. Huh? On your way. Uh, yes, sir. Get up, have one. Here. Sato, there's letters to Digger from Ace Martin in Red Rock. Oh. We hear plenty about him, Kimakari. Yes, he's a sharp schemer, a confidence man, a swindler. Smart enough to stay out of jail. Um, what him say in letter? Here, I'll read it to you. He says, I have a buyer for the plans if they are all that you claim. Seal them in an envelope and bring them to me as soon as possible. Be sure to let me know when you will arrive. Signed, Ace Martin. That's the letter, Tano, and here are the plans. They are the original plans of Aaron Bird to overthrow the government. Oh. And who won by him? I don't know, but I want to find out. That man has dangerous ideas. We on a trail of killers? Yes. We might find a man who wants to be a king and who thought it would be cheaper to steal the plans than to buy them. All right, come on. Easy, set up. Come on, come on. Come on. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Say, there are exciting free gifts for you inside the new specially marked Cheerios packages. These gifts are pocket-sized Lone Ranger comic books 
brand new books that come to you only in Cheerios. Remember, you can't buy these special comic books, but you will get one free in each specially marked Cheerios package. The books are 16 pages, pocket size, in four colors. And they are two completely different books telling two different stories. One of these exciting books tells the story of how the Lone Ranger found his horse, Silver. The other tells how the Lone Ranger met Tonto, got his mask, and why he uses silver bullets. Of course, you'll want to own both of these comic books. It's so easy to get them free with a purchase of specially marked Cheerios packages. The supply is limited, so ask your mother to get plenty of Cheerios now so you'll be sure to have both of these exciting comic books. Why, they're almost as much fun as eating Cheerios. Now to continue. At first the trail was clear and sharp. But the killers, after their first dash to escape, followed a devious route through the woods. They traveled over swampland and in running streams to hide their tracks. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were able to maintain a dogged pursuit only because of their ability to read signs invisible to most men. Their progress was slow, and it was twilight when they reached the edge of the woods and saw the nearby town of Red Rock. Who's the town? Oh, fella. Max, go that way. Yes, I was hoping we'd find the killers in a hideout in the woods. Said they've gone to Red Rock. Oh. And plenty hard to find in town. We'll temporarily abandon the search for those three men, Tonto. There's one other man who is much more dangerous. You mean Ace Martin? No, I mean the man to whom Ace Martin hopes to sell the plans of Aaron Burr. That man wants to overthrow the government. Ace Martin, no. And Ace Martin is the key to my plan. While the Lone Ranger outlined his dangerous plan, twilight deepened into darkness which made it possible for the two men to ride unseen into Red Rock. The masked man waited behind a row of buildings while Tonto learned that Ace Martin lived in a large house at the far side of town. It was Ace who had led the attack on the stagecoach, and the two gunmen who had aided were with him in his home. Martin, if you think you can do us out of our money... Nothing of the kind, Jake. I promised to pay you and Wendy after I collected for the papers and the sealed envelope. Well, what's in the envelope? Papers. We know that. What kind of papers? Why are they so valuable? The nature of the papers must be kept secret. That's why I told Digger to seal them in an envelope. The door. Is it locked? Yes. Do you think the sheriff learned that we did the shooting? I doubt it. But let's be ready for trouble. Jake, you stand there against the wall beside the door. You'll be behind anyone who comes in. Ah, Shabby. Yes, who is it? Just a minute. Hey, that's not the sheriff's voice. Whoever he is, Wendy, hold your gun on him when I open the door. Right. You mask. I'll come in. You're covered, mister. I'll still come in. I didn't know you had a visitor, Martin. He's got two visitors. Oh? You're covered two ways. So keep your hands away from those guns. If I intended to use guns, it'd have been in my hands when you opened the door. What's your business? We'll discuss it after your friends holster their guns. Put him away, boys, but keep an eye on him. Yes, that's better. Martin, the man named Digger, was shot on his way to Red Rock. The stagecoach driver told about it. And he told about a masked man who took some papers. Some papers and a letter. This letter. Do you recognize it, Martin? You wrote it. What if I did? Do you still want the papers Digger was bringing to you? If I did, could you hand them over? Maybe. What are they worth to you? I'll pay a high price. If they're intact. Let me see them. Very well. I opened the envelope and looked at them, but they're just as I found them. Here they are. Now, hoist your hands. What? Don't go for a gun. Drop that envelope. Keep your hands high. Just drop the envelope. Very well. Now, step back. Keep him covered, boys. You'd better take his guns, Martin. Wait till I see if these are the papers I want. You can't get away with a double cross like this, Martin. I can tell the law you're the man who murdered Digger. Who says we murdered anyone? Are the papers all right? Yeah, they seem to be. I'll take this hombre's guns and his mask. We'll see if he's anyone we know. Better try and gag him. Yeah, we'll do that. Just a minute. I, I have a surprise for you. 
Do you remember the man who was with me when we chased you three away from the stagecoach? Yeah, the Indian. <laughs> That's an admission. You are the killers. Well, Jake, you fool. Unless you were there, you couldn't know that my partner's an Indian. All right, so we are the killers. You're never going to tell anyone. I was about to say that Tonner was watching you through the window. That's an old trick to make us look away. Uh, he's right. Hey, hey what? Uh, drop down. No. Oh. The Lone Ranger acted in the split second when the gunman glanced away. He charged at Ace Martin, who was nearest, and sent him staggering against Jake. Wendy was about to fire, but Tonto's gun spoke first. Wendy's gun, smashed by a bullet, flew out of his hand. Jake fired. It was a wild shot because the Lone Ranger slapped aside his gun. Then the masked man drove a fist to his jaw. You take it! As Jake collapsed from the knockout blow, the Lone Ranger seized the opportunity to escape. He's getting away! You all right, Kima Sunday? Yes, let's get to the horses. Your plan, plenty dangerous. The risk is justified. You leave papers? Yes. Uh, meet your sheriff now? Yes, and hurry. I'll stay here with Silver and watch the house. Uh, get him up. Oh. Inside the house, Windy rubbed his hand, which ached from the impact of the bullet that had smashed his gun. And Jake rubbed his aching jaw. But Ace Martin looked well pleased. We've got the papers, boys. That's what counts. Yeah, but that masked man got away. I'm not worried about him. He knows we shot the man from the east. You can't prove it. Besides, who'd take his word against mine? The word of a masked man. I'd sure like to get square for the crack on the jaw he Forget gave. it, Jake. Forget it. Do you boys want to wait here while I ride to a certain ranch and collect for these papers? Not in your life. We're going with you. Suit yourself. Your horses are in my shed. So. <laughs> Later that night, Ace Martin and his two companions sat in the Halstead Ranch House several miles from town, while the wealthy cattle baron read the plans of Aaron Burr from start to finish. He nodded as he folded the papers. Uh-huh. Well, what do you think of them, Halstead? They're even better than I'd hoped. I remember, Martin, I told you that you and I must be the only ones who know about my undertaking. We are the only ones. I did what you said and got rid of Digger. How? Shot him on the stage trail. He'll be buried tomorrow in Red Rock. What about these friends who came with you? They're not friends. They're just a couple of gun flecks I hired to help me get Digger. Why did you bring them here? I owe them money for the job. They wouldn't let me out of their sight. If you could advance me some cash so I can pay them off... They, uh, they know too much. They don't know anything about the plan. They know you're guilty of murder. And if you're arrested, they'll be involved. You think we'd tell the law? I'm sure you ought to pay well, sit still. What's the idea of the gun? You're going to be paid off. My way. Make a move and it'll be right here in this room. Take the guns, Martin. Oh, wait, Hall. I sit. said take their guns. What? All right. You'll help me rectify the mistake you made in bringing them here. Martin, you double crosser. Sorry, Jake. You'll never get away with this. Your gun, Wendy. Now toss the weapons into the corner. Yeah. Now cut some cord from the window drapes and tie those gun slicks. I'll have some of my men dispose of them. Ace Martin was pale and tight-lipped as he tied the hands of Jake and Windy. When he was finished, he turned to Halstead, who still held his heavy gun. Now what? Now, Ace, I suppose you expect to be paid off. What's good enough for your two friends should be good enough for you. What? What do you mean? I have these papers. There's nothing more you can do for me. But I... You said... I thought we'd go into the deal together. That's what your friend Digger thought when he wrote to you. You're getting what you asked for, Martin, double-crosser. Two of my men have been waiting in the front hall ever since you arrived. They'll pay off all three of you. You can't kill me. The law... The law will believe me when I say three gunmen came here to rob me and were shot. No. No, you... Come in, men. Take charge of me. Mast. Drop that gun. I'll shoot you. After the Lone Ranger, the sheriff came into the room, followed by three deputies and the driver of the stagecoach. Halstead, wounded in the arm, cried, Sheriff, what's the meaning of this? Major through, Halstead. So are Martin and the gun flicks. Now, let's see your arm. I'm sure it's not a flesh wound, Sheriff. Yes, that's all. I'll handcuff you, Halstead, and I'll bandage the wound. Uh, Sheriff, if you don't mind, I'll take these papers. Whatever you say, mister. Handcuffs on me? Yep. I I don't understand. My limb in the hall. They're still in the hall. But now they're tied and gagged. You see, Halstead, I was talking to the stage driver a little while ago when Tondo came into my office and said the masked man had a line on the killers. I went with Tondo and the deputies to join the masked man. 
And we all followed Martin and his gun slicks. They came here. And we heard everything that was said. And who are you? Why, I was driving the stage when Digger was shot. Martin and his friends are killers, Sheriff, but you had nothing on me. That's for a jury to decide. Uh, uh, Sheriff, the masked man's leaving. Huh? Oh, hey, mister, hold on. You've no further need of me, Sheriff. The puddle's waiting outside. But what about those papers that started the whole thing? I'm going to burn them. Adios. That masked man, who is he? Kimo Sabe. What'd you say, driver? I was telling Halstead that the masked man's name is Kimo Sabe. <laughs> Those are Indian words meaning faithful friend. Well, that's what Tonto called him. Well, I reckon so, but everyone else calls him the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Yes, champions are made, not born. That's the American way. Here's how one famous basketball champion got started. Jim Pollard of the Minneapolis Lakers. They called him Little Jumpin' Jim. Nothing short of the top for him. He practiced rebounds layups, too, and followed what the champs all knew. Wheaties for breakfast, so good for you. Today, Jim plays with lots of bounce. Still eats his Wheaties every ounce. Jim Pollard started eating Wheaties when he was 11, been eating them ever since, 21 years. Solid food, Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Let's go, Jim, down the floor. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. Directed by Charles D. Livingston. And edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.